Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Tommy Meets and, and now you can see directly who we have here on stream <laughs> <laughs> on, on stream Matthew Warren, Erlik Gaming, my friend uh, How are you doing today? Tommy, thank you so much. Uh, I'm doing great. I'm so excited. This is like a dream come true to be on your stream. Uh, that's amazing. I hope you, uh, everyone in chat, are having a blast here this morning. Because for many of us, it is morning. And um, I shouldn't complain. It's 9, 10 here, so I shouldn't shouldn't really complain. It's, uh, it's, not really, it's not really early. But as for those of you that have never watched an episode of Tommy Meets, yeah, that's not weird because we have only had one <laughs> and uh, but it works like this i'm gonna we're gonna have some gameplay running around in the background it's um, going to be more towards a live podcast where I, i'm gonna grill matthew with some questions about him himself and also what he thinks about the game and then obviously we're gonna end up with the five quickest that we ended up with the last time i have some i have a fun one there as well i can't <laughs> i can't wait sounds good yeah uh, we're gonna go on for approximately one hour and if you have a question for matthew or for me but especially for matthew please write that in chat and i will see if i won't bring that in but you know uh, uh, enough about that i will have to say we need to get matthew up to 500 subs Guys and gals, you know, we uh, he's close and uh, that's the good part. I want everyone to support every every content creator in the community. And this this um, Tommy Meets is for Matthew. Click uh, or search for Erlik Gaming. I think that's right, Matthew, right? Yeah, and I've actually spoken in chat a few times. If people want, they could just click on my name. Boom. There we go. Click on the name, hit subscribe and also check out the beautiful content on uh, the channel but you know uh mark Ibiri, awesome thank you so much for that so matthew who are you and like how are you <laughs> I, i'm fantastic you know i'm uh i just love this game i love this community i think it's so fun to see so many people come together at this time of day like for me it's quarter after one in the morning um you know i'm just so excited to be a part of what i consider the most positive gaming community that i've ever seen but how come like you said quarter past one in the morning how come you look fresh i would be looking like a <laughs> <laughs> like a zombie at this time i'm uh i don't know i'm a i'm a nurse you know i worked um up to a couple of hours before this started i just uh i feel excited i'm happy you know like this is uh this is the best time of the day for me uh, everybody is asleep and I'm kind of free, free to be me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. You know, we're gonna come into that more, you know, towards, I know you're streaming late, or like, late my time, at least, or like early. My God, this with time zones, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> that's the hardest part of making this happen, was trying to figure out what time is it for both of us. Honestly, yeah. But we're gonna start from the beginning, though, because there... I know a little about you, but that's uh, because I've been having the blessing of getting to know you a little bit. But, uh, like, for those that don't know you, who are Matthew Warren? I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm just a regular guy, 38 years old. You know, I've got a wife, a beautiful wife, three beautiful kids, uh, three little boys, uh, six, eight, and ten. You know, I'm, uh, I'm proudly a nurse, you know, that's something that I find is a very unique male thing you don't hear a lot of guys doing and um you know i'm just a person that's been blessed with so many beautiful things in my life i've been through some things but uh you know i'm so thankful to have the opportunity to play a game like this to be a part of this kind of online community and uh, you know i'm a gamer tommy um i started gaming in 1988 with the very first nintendo console and um, I've owned every Nintendo console since then. There's a reason I'm not Golf Clash Matthew. You know, it's because I game. I love to game. So this is just a natural progression for me to, to be doing this. In interesting. So you started started gaming before Bef I was even thought of. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's... I still have that machine. It's in working condition. I could plug it in and play the original Mario within a few minutes. Isn't that worth a ton of money? I just need to ask. Uh, <laughs> maybe a couple hundred bucks. Um, oh but no, it's worth more n nostalgia than it is cash for me. It's um, you know, it's just been a big part of my childhood, but it's... Uh, and my adulthood. Uh, isn't it really like looking when you look back at the games that you were playing back then, and looking at the games that are at the moment, like? 
how how oh. do you look at it? It must be like uh, like uh, the Stone Age, and then now real uh, not reality, but like a future. <laughs> they're they're like reality, you know. And I remember back playing, you know, probably when the Nintendo 64 came out, and when they start ha first first started having games like the Ocarina of Time and Mario 64 and GoldenEye. Uh, 007, these games were some of the first really three-dimensional uh, and graphically immersive environments that you could move around in in a three-dimensional world, you know, because the first games were just flat, side-scrolling 2D things. And when those 3D games came out, I knew then that the high-resolution graphics that we've come to expect in games today would be a thing. Um, mm. You know, I was one of the first kids in my school to buy a cell phone. Like, the future has always <laughs> been apparent to me. Nice, nice cell phone. I remember when dad gave me like, uh, <laughs> when I was like seven years old, gave me a phone that didn't work. But at least I had a cell phone. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I feel so lucky. Uh, that's that's nice. You know, when it comes to the family, uh, you you said you have three kids, one wife, right? You I, betcha. I don't know why I said one wife, but you know. Well, that's, <laughs> for now, you know, so far, um, I've asked permission to incorporate other wives. Um, I've been shot down, so I'll just have to stick with one. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, Mark Beaver actually asks a very nice question. It's actually basically the question that I was about to ask, you know, with three kids and, and a wife. Like, how do you find time to stream and play? You know, I, I can never find time to stick to a schedule. I wish I could tell people every Saturday and Sunday. Um, but the funny thing is, is that I work a really weird schedule. Um, I work from 3 until 11 p.m. So I'm an evening nurse, you know. I'm the one that takes you for supper and helps you to bed. And so then when I come home, my wife and my kids are all in bed. So it's quiet in my house right now. I'm all chill. Everybody's sleeping. Uh, and then I get this beautiful four or five hour window, six, seven nights a week that I can stay up, you know, for a long time and play games and work on things. It's uh, it's really terribly ridiculous for a 38-year-old to have such freedom, but uh, but here I am. Uh, that's, that's uh, I would, uh, what can I say? That's, uh, that's amazing that you can get so much time still with that schedule. But, you know, is it that you're working like late hours every day of the week? Yeah, yep. okay. I work five days a week basically eight hours a day but then i also don't wake up until noon yeah. so i i do a lot of productive tasks at night so not only do i play golf clash or other games but i also like i do the dishes i do my chores so my wife can leave a bunch of dishes for me when i come home when i get home mm -hmm. and i just do all that in the middle of the night she wakes up to a clean house things are tidied up you know so we've just adapted you know we've been together for almost 18 years yeah, nice. um i've been married to her since 2008 and you know uh we just developed what works for us at this time I, and I, uh, I i'm afraid of what would happen if i had a day job i don't know how i would do this <laughs> you know i i love to hear how you talk about your marriage i hope i'm um, i'm gonna experience the same thing and i i can just yeah. say that jennifer would obviously love some clean dishes when when she wakes well, up that, that's not you know, gonna happen hello maybe <laughs> someday maybe some set the bar now set the bar now <laughs> yeah Teach Teach her what to expect from you, because if you set it really high, she'll expect that forever. Yeah, and that's um, that might be a little issue. You know, I love her and stuff, and I would do everything for her. But, uh, yep, I don't know. I don't know how to uh, take myself out of this, this corner I painted myself into now, if she ever going to watch this stream. Um, so that's going to... <laughs> She's not going to watch it. We know that's true. <laughs> uh, Matthew, uh, you're Canadian, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Born and raised. How it, I, I I love the language with you know the oat and and stuff <laughs> like it, is that a is that a like a, a la, like is that a dialect thing or is uh, yeah. you're you're the one with the accent not My. me I mean uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm in Western Canada, right? I live in Alberta, which is uh, one province from the furthest west coast of Canada. We're in the prairies in the middle of kind of like, you know, farming, cowboy, oil country, if you will. Mm. Uh, um, you know, and then if you go to the far east of Canada, they have a completely different dialect. And then we have an entire province of French speaking people. So yeah. it's a really diverse country. That's a very large country. And uh, I just feel really blessed to actually be Canadian. I know there's amazing countries all over the world but uh i recommend you know if you're looking for a new place to live this is a great place to start yeah uh, yeah it's uh, 
like when when you read about Canada in Sweden at least uh, Canada is always painted up as a country where you know uh, P- like Sweden could learn from uh, uh, oh. I, you know it's uh, I I might just read the only <laughs> only one but it, it's in the end that's kind of uh, got to me when I read that like Sweden and Canada is kind of similar in the way that they you know, handle certain things that, you know, with, with a good school and, and stuff like yep. that. Healthcare. Uh, yeah, exactly. Take, so. It's, you know, often, you know, uh, misconstrued by individuals that don't understand it. But, you know, we uh, we have a good life, you know. People work hard, they contribute, and uh, they're taken care of if need be. It's not a, not a welfare type of situation. Everybody I know is uh, basically full-time, hard-working people. And that's, you know, that's uh, pretty rare if, that, if that's the, you know, the case. There is obviously, like, yeah, that's not... Ha- that's In not my ha- little city, <laughs> there's about 100,000 people, and yeah. I know for a fact there's maybe three homeless people. You Whoa. know, we, we, we live next door to a larger metropolis area that has close to a million, mm. and of course there's more big city problems there, right? Um, mm. But I just find it. It's, um, it's a really industrious place, and I don't think that... I think that's something a lot of people would be surprised to learn about Canadians is that we're not just, you know, drinking beer and playing hockey, eh? There's, uh, there's, there's a lot of industry. There's a lot of really hard working people out there, you know, working in forestry and oil and uh, farming and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of big commerce and technology centers. It's a, it's an interesting place. I don't think we get the credit we deserve. Oh my God. I love you guys in chat. <laughs> like, yeah. that, that, like, uh, and... I want to shout out Aaron bell that's a good friend of mine from uh from work a good real life friend aaron i'm really happy to see you here thank you yeah now we've got uh kind of like from f expert there like he says that or he or she says i don't know if it's a he or she but so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna guess uh that you you don't have a canadian accent i what? i don't know <laughs> I, I can't tell i'm not sure i know that the the canadian accent most people are probably thinking about is from the eastern canadians they got a real accent by and they talk with all sorts of different uh, lingo and um, sort of words that I'm not as familiar with. Yeah, that's not, okay. We have a he. Okay, good. Thank you. I, I, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> that's good. So, uh, okay. Uh, moving on, uh, like I went, you know, uh, moving and moving on and moving on, you know, I'm still gonna go into a little this with the Canadian stuff because I think it's hilarious. You know, I watch, as I mentioned to you before the stream, I watch How I Met Your Mother, and that's okay. that's my favorite show. And there is a there is a woman there, uh, like with a not the real name but with actor name called Robin, that is from okay. Canada. So like, uh, uh, and they always go on about that thing there that Canadians are too nice. You know, you can basically <laughs> hit someone in the face and they apologize. Is, is that yes. is there any th- truth to that? A hundred percent. You know, I I say I'm sorry all the time. You know, it's like, it's just a natural reaction. I, I can't even explain it. It's just this sort of cultural thing that you, you learn growing up and that you sort of experience in school, right? Like mm. it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a kindness. There's just a very kind society. Everywhere you go, you know, if you're in a store and maybe you uh, reach in front of somebody to grab a can off the shelf and you're shopping, uh, and you realize you've done something what might be considered rude people are immediately oh i'm so sorry no 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 you can take it it's okay like there's very rare it's really rare to see a confrontation of any violence or any kind of like yelling or screaming it happens of course it happens right but it's it's not the norm honestly that's uh that that's uh, i'm laughing because it's kind of like very that's super rare i thought there was definitely something they would just purely made up uh, no, uh, there. no, that's uh, taken directly from Canadian culture, <laughs> and I'm sorry about it, but it's true. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, then we have the sorry. I do, I do obviously don't have to apologize about that. And we have Mark Beery <laughs> with the two bucks. Cheers to Canada and Sweden, my friend. Hey, thank hey, you so much for the two you. bucks. Give Mark Beery some boom and some love in the chat. I always wonder, like, how do you pronounce that name, Mark Mark Beery? I, I, want, I think you're pretty close. I'd say that's as good as I can get. Yeah, I don't really. It's I will have to learn that another day, I guess. And <laughs> so you know, you're too. Uh, I was about to say you're too nice. I think you uh, obviously are. 
you know, I've never seen you being uh, mad in any way, not like me being like a baby hitting my hand wow. in, the, in the desk and stuff when I miss a shot. But one thing that I would like to ask you if you're afraid uh, about, and I'm going to come to why I asked this, like, are you afraid of the dark? In a way, yeah. I don't like the feeling of being in a dark space and not being able to judge depth. I don't like being able to reach out and not know how far away the wall is or so I mean am I afraid of the dark a little bit yeah I don't find that there's monsters in the dark but I don't like the feeling that I could you know crash into something interesting because like that is also one thing that I got from uh, from the show there and you know, I'm sorry I'm just referring to the show but <laughs> that's, that's fine. The, the, when it's Canada I kind of refer to that and then they have like one section where you know they are very clear with that Canadians are afraid of the dark, and that's something that Americans are joking about towards Canadians. Like now, I'm talking. Now I'm asking you because I, you know, you know, you know Canada more than me. But is there any truth to that, or is I'm just like now? It's it's not something I've ever heard. I mean, I don't know anyone that's ever spoken of it or asked me about it. Um, so I, I think that most people, deep down inside, probably are. But I just think that Canadians are brave enough to admit it. Yeah, that's uh, it is interesting though, because that that is honestly something if, if <laughs> that I would love to know. Uh, I, I it's um, it's super super interesting with the with the dark. Kind of <laughs> are all Canadians are afraid of the dark? Fact says Eric Bell. <laughs> I, I think so. I think probably, um, but most of them wouldn't admit it. No, okay. but I will. Yeah, that's good. You know, that's why I like you. You know, we can have an honest conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm honest to a fault sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Matthew, Canada is kind of referred to hockey big time. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And is that your sport as well or is Ab there any absolutely. other? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, like, I don't play any sports. Like, as you mm. may have guessed from my video game history, mm. I'm quite a nerd. <laughs> you know, the, the librarian was my friend in school. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hockey, I love it. I go to the hockey game with my parents as often as I can. I've been watching it on, on TV since I was a little kid. My team right now, the Edmonton Oilers, is crushing the beginning of the season. Uh, we've only lost a couple of games. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. But again, as an evening worker, I don't get to watch as much of it as I would like. Um, if I had the choice between watching a hockey game replay or, say, a Golf Clash Tommy stream, these days it's going to be the stream. Oh, you make you make you make me blush. You know, that's like, true. <laughs> true. That that's uh, now. Yeah, you know, I don't personally. You know, I'm a football guy, as you probably have um, <laughs> known. But like the only hockey I watch is the World Cup and stuff like that. So it's very. In, in, do you consider Canada to be the best hockey team in the world? Some years, you know, absolutely. We have definitely had some gold. But to me, the only way you can be that team is to be the most recent gold medal winner. Um, of the World Championship and the World Junior Championship. Um, I, so right now, I don't think so. I think, um, I can't remember the latest standings of the national competitions. But no, uh, the Americans, you know, the, the Russians, the Swedish. <laughs> um, there's a few other teams, the countries that have shown incredible promise and are developing really deep talent. And to me, that's um, really a great thing for the sport overall. You know, I advocate for hockey not just because I enjoy it, but I, I think it's an exciting game that has a really fast pace. You get to see some people get their faces smashed in from time to time. So, you know, take a little UFC, put that on skates. Um, yeah, it's like a fast-paced uh, football or soccer, as you uh, as you say. Nah, nah, yeah, football. We don't say soccer. Like, not here in Sweden. I, I feel weird saying football because that I'm close to the United States. And if I talk about football, it's automatically the NFL or the CFL. We have a Canadian football league, yeah. which is with the oblong ball that we throw down the field. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know. Oh, shit, oh, uh, uh, sorry, I, I never don't. I, I don't have headphones on, so I don't hear, you know, the sub notification, <laughs> and that came oh. just right in my ear. So I uh, know. No clear. Okay, so I love how diplomatic you were with that answer. You know, not not ruling out any country in the no. world. I was, I was, I would have been like, okay, Sweden is the best. You know, you say I, whatever. I'm cheering <laughs> for Canada to win. I want them to win every single time. But like, as a hockey fan for life, I I, I acknowledge the really good play of other mm. teams, and I, I take that to other sports as well. 
Yeah. You know, I remember watching the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan, Dennis Rodman, Scottie Pippen, you know, this like uh-huh. dynasty league or team that won all these championships. They were the best in the world, you know, that's, at that sport at that time. And I loved it. And that's NBA, right? Uh, yeah, the yeah. NBA in the United States. Yeah. And then I remember them going to the Olympics. They brought the dream team, all the best players in the league, and they crushed every country in the world. You know, so I love that. I love watching champions. Now we come. I need to do something about the uh, subscription um, uh, thingy because it uh, messes up my head. War Ming official and Deepak Shah. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel, both of you. And uh, Mark B. Re Sweden has the gold of Gold Clash. Thank you. Thank you. They do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, we do have a lot of questions about you know um, uh, Matt and uh, and Golf Clash. And uh, for those of you watching, we're gonna come to that. The, you know, we are definitely gonna go into the Golf Clash area in just a bit. But first, gaming guy, you say gaming guy, and for me, gaming yeah. guy is someone that sits there playing uh, playing a little game here and there. But you know, would you like to elaborate that? What how uh, what is a gaming guy for you, or like yeah. how yeah. You know, like, yeah, it started off as a kid playing the consoles. You know, you'd go over to your friend's house and play the Nintendo. We'd share, we got two controllers, or maybe we'd only had one, and we'd have to trade controllers, right? And then into, like, the late 90s, we got on the PC, you know? And I've been a PC gamer ever since. Mm-hmm. And playing games like uh, Command & Conquer, Red Alert, and uh, Call of Duty. Um, and then in 2000, late 2007, I started playing I'm, a, I'm ashamed to admit this um, <clears throat> world of warcraft why i say um, now in YouTube, world, why because it has a great stigma attached to it of the you know uh, obese single man living in his parents basement <laughs> uh, but i played an immense amount of world of warcraft you know i've put over 600 days played into that game um Whoa. i'm proud to say that i'm a you know i'm still an active member of a raiding guild um, there's an amazing immersive community but that's the thing that threw me off when I started playing Golf Clash. I wasn't expecting all these amazing people. Mm. You know, like I, I thought World of Warcraft had the community and this was just a little phone game. Yeah. And that's what's drawn me in is there's an amazing positive game community here. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, I game. I play a lot of different games, but I balance it out. You know, I, I make sure my wife and my kids are, are mm. happy. They're, they're doing what they got to do. And, you know, when I get my chance to jam, I jam, I play. And if not, you know, I, I make sure that uh, games always come second to real life as much as I love them. That's good. You know, that's uh, that's very important to say that. And I think that goes for all of us, you know, even though we love a game, like when we have a family and, you know, someone that we oh. care about, they they obviously always comes first. Uh, and to just uh, really put that question to you guys in chat, are you playing any specific game? Like, is there any... You know, as Matt you say, World of Warcraft, if I would look at him, <laughs> I would never guess that, which is, uh, you know, I have uh, I have so many friends. My brother used to play World of Warcraft big time, but that was like 10 years ago now, uh, or like yeah. maybe even more. Uh, so I'm not really into that game myself, but I used to play Multiply Other, you know, I play RuneScape, I play Tribal Wars, uh, so also PC games that I put, you know, yeah so many hours that I, I don't even want to count them in so much um ever play uh, wgt golf is a question getting chat uh, now when we're talking about games is that a mobile game because if it's a mobile golf game that looks really real has very realistic graphics then yeah i did play it a little bit mm-hmm. I- inter- yeah i haven't never uh, it, i think that's the game where you know it's uh, it's like you have like a guy standing there on T. It's not just a, a target like we have in Gold Clash. Yep. I think that is right. Yeah, um, very much, very similar to that. Kind of like the old Tiger Woods golf games that you mm-hmm, play mm-hmm. on uh, Xbox or whatnot. Yeah, that was uh, that one I played big time. That yeah, Tiger they all, I think everybody did. Yeah. They were so good. I was awesome. Why is the is that still up and running today? Do you know? Mm, I don't think so. I think now it's Rory McIlroy. Whoa. <laughs> or someone with a very similar name. Tiger got into some political trouble with some of his uh, little drama in his life. And I think his sponsors backed away from his brand image a little bit when he tarnished it with accusations of cheating on his wife and accusations of being, you know, um, 
And that was less than a good representative for the company. You know, that was big thing here in Sweden. You know, uh, as uh, his wife was was a Swede. Yes. Uh, yes. So, uh, so a yeah. A beautiful woman. What was he thinking? Uh, he yes, he <laughs> he likes women. I guess obviously that's never something I would condone. And you know, uh, for you guys in chat to know that as well. But it's uh, it's amazing how, how, you know, it's amazing to me how. Even when he has done all the things that he has done, which is shit. I'm sorry for the language, but it is. Uh, but then he stands there on T, and he has so many people there sharing on him like he's the god. Even me included, watching television and hoping he's going to win. Like he has such a power. And uh, I remember when he won that major. He does. Shit. He does. Yeah. The night, the the first one. When he was walking up the 18th, yeah, 18th yeah. fairway at Augusta in his red shirt, like he was 19 years old, uh, exactly, I watched yeah. the whole tournament live. I remember it like it was yesterday. I, I, I have been a Tiger Woods fan for most of my life, but you know, yeah, that kind of behavior—it's not something I condone. And uh, I've really—I haven't been following like I used to. You know, that's—it's uh, it's too bad. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Everly Gaming, the name. We need to. Uh, I saw that in chat, but I have that oh. on my list as well. How? How like w yeah I can I I thought about it last night when I was going to bed not about you naked but about your name <laughs> <laughs> so how, <coughs> how about the um, like the oh god the early gaming name how did you get to decide oh. that well it's ironic because I already spoke about its its roots that is the name of my longest and most favorite played character in World of Warcraft oh. And <laughs> I was sitting around trying to think about, you know, a unique identity for my channel, mm. right? I didn't want to try to rip somebody off or make it like Tommy or anybody else. I'd like, what is unique to me? You know, mm. what represents me and my gaming in general? Because my channel is 89% Golf Clash, but I do upload a little bit of other content as well. Mm. And uh, I just, I looked it up. I Googled Ehrlich and I was like, wait a minute this is a really unique name. Like you don't really see it out there. And I just thought, you know, it represents me. It's got that sort of whimsical fantasy side to it. And it's got that little bit of mystery. Like, what is that? What, you know, and it kind of makes people question. So yeah, that's, that's where it comes from. That's my shaman, my restoration healing shaman. <laughs> nice. You know, I love, I love the reference to World of Warcraft. Have you ever thought of streaming that? in any way or that no. might, might not be possible I don't. here's the funny thing it's like i i would love to and i would stream it in a heartbeat however there was in my guild um, one of the main guild leaders they started a stream and uh, we were very supportive as a group you know yeah yeah go stream let's watch desi's stream and that's her name desi mm -hmm. and um she's basically fragmented herself from our team and is no longer one of the leaders and is she she was understandably like i understand why mm. she basically choose had to choose her stream chat over the guild you know okay. because when you build an immersive community it's hard to back away from that and i keep wow as sort of this thing that i do with that group of people and i have a couple of real life friends that i play it with once or twice a week mm. and i just want to keep that the thing that we do you yeah. know i don't want to have to give it away to to everyone else and mm, understandably honestly because you you get to a point that's the same here in you know golf clash that i've noticed uh, you try to keep on answering everyone like especially on facebook and stuff and messenger you know but once you get uh like so many messages that it's not impossible because it takes you the whole day i yeah. i kind of see that happening to other content creators as well you know often when you when you have a a smaller base it's easier to juggle two things at the same time but then in the end yeah. you need to choose it's um it's interesting that you bring that one up it's not that it's in the end any bad thing you obviously it's sad because you lose the connection maybe with with some people but you know yeah and so then that's why you know if mm. i just have my once or twice a week and i can raid with my guild and we mm. can do our thing and i don't have it you know taking over anything yeah. then it can kind of hide there in our special little spot and we just have you know three hours a week scheduled together so it's not like it takes away from my golf clash time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice 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 hi. robert uh thank you so much for watching have a really good night there in iowa thank you um okay so now when we go into the game type of questions that i do have which you know are gonna be some 
interesting uh, things here and i hope you guys in chat still are here enjoying the show uh hit the thumbs up and don't forget to go over to every lick gaming and uh, uh and subscribe he also made a, a message in the chat uh, in the easy way click on his name subscribe see if we can't get him to at least 500 subs i would say that that should be a bare minimum when you have watched this stream so hopefully you're gonna have that uh, that later today hey no problem uh when did you start playing the game golf clash now um so. just about 11 months so i'm a little mm -hmm. bit slow compared to how i see some people progress um but yeah i started in uh, last november just before the ghostly glade just uh, as that ghostly glades tournament actually was mm. happening so just about a year now i suppose and I remember looking at all the tournament images and stuff, and I thought, wow, that's that looks awesome. How yeah. come I can't play it? And I was still, like, way too low level. <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, Ghost of Glades was... Um, I remember that one. I, I mentioned that on stream now lately as well, because that's uh, one of my tournaments that I would never forget, because I was in a... Not in a slump. I was still pulling off top tens, maybe a third or a second place, but I haven't been winning a gold mm -hmm. <clears throat> in, like three four months and and that was rare and it kind of got to me but i remember hole six now uh, we had the one that was hole five the last tournament okay. was hole six that tournament and i have a rough iron and i knew if i made that rough iron i'm gonna have the goal because uh, <laughs> that, was, that was kind of very and i and uh, and i made that rough iron from albatross oh. and yeah you know that's uh oh my yeah. god still makes me still makes me smile today i not yeah. not I'm sorry to bring that up to each and every no, one, I but feel that's that. kind of like <laughs> awesome. We love it, Tommy. That's what we're here <laughs> for, buddy. It feels so good. Yeah, and you know, to um, did you uh, like uh, MVR ask Ella is asking what was the last stream of mine that you did was watch? Um, the last one that I had time to watch in the entirety mm -hmm. was the um, opening night of the tournament. I always watch that stream unless something happens yeah. i absolutely love watching you work through the course be it a brand new course which is the best um or one that we've already played and just sort of seeing you kind of unravel it for the first time it gives me I, I just find it so entertaining and especially watching the expert and the master division uh, otherwise i watched your pro expert stream mm. last i believe it was where you started with pro and then played uh, expert after? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sorry for laughing. I wasn't about your question because I need to ask you this. That Ashley says in chat. I know that you probably can see that. Uh, what oh. was going through your head when, <laughs> when Tommy first I showed up in your stream? <laughs> I didn't believe it. I, th I thought, no, somebody's trolling me. You know, somebody just made an account with your name or whatever. And that was like, again, that was a really like eye-opening moment for me. Like, this is... A community that I'm like a part of like this guy is showing up in my little piddly stream I had a sheet hanging behind me I didn't know what I was doing I still don't know what I'm doing and it was just like uh, it was magic you know it was absolutely magic and I appreciate it I appreciate the way you take the time and not just to show up to my stream I've seen you in so many other people's streams commenting on people's posts on the internet you know, answering the same question for the 3,000th time with honor, with, with grace, you know, with the dignity of, uh, of that respect to the new player who doesn't know that you've answered it a hundred times. It's a replay. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not giving away shots. <laughs> like... Oh, my God. Yeah, that. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Th <laughs> thank you for the kind words. And, you know, I, I think that speaks to all of us. I, I love the community and I love the way that, pe that the content creators and the streamers are acting. I would say... Uh, all but one really uh because you know going into other streams supporting each other you know trying to help everyone to grow yeah. the channel the more people on every channel means that it's better for the community because more everyone. people can learn yeah um, we have to support each other and help our game grow this is our mm -hmm. game that we love together and that's something i think everybody here right now and who watches this video is gonna understand is like you know you, you got to advocate for what you love yeah, uh, exactly. Couldn't agree with you more. And uh, speaking of that, we get uh, we get RJ TV in the yeah, house. I see that. Hey, hey, buddy. Uh, okay, Mark Beer. I'm gonna take uh, your question later. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, go over to like I I asked you when you did start playing the game, but why did you start playing game? What 
got you into try? Uh, you mentioned the ghostly my, glaze, but was that yep. just a... That was just a coincidence. My uh. friend Jeremy, uh, just a good buddy of mine. I've known him for 20 years, and he kept telling me about this game, and I kept brushing him off. We always <laughs> tell each other about mobile games. And yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, golf, whatever. I mean, eh, doesn't really do it for me. And then finally one night, he was just showing me screenshots and everything. And I thought, okay, okay, whatever. So I t t checked it out. And I played it for like six hours. And it, it just so happens that like I had it installed. I played it for a couple of weeks. And then we had some time off for Christmas, right? So then I was with my family at my parents' house. And I just played the living daylights out of it. And then one day I Googled it. And then it all went to hell. Or excuse me. <laughs> Then you find, then you found me, right? Yes, I found Golf Flash Tommy. <laughs> yeah. It's RJTV yeah, nice. watching the ring videos. Oh, the rabbit hole! When I uh, when when I told my mom that I was watching a ring video, uh, like I told her, okay, I, I what did you do last night, Tommy? I I watched a ring video. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> she just looked at me and then walked walked away. And uh, now she understands what I'm talking about. But still, that was. Uh, so we know, I think we all kind of, I remember when it was uh, only RJ TV out there because RJ was the only one, he was first, if I'm not completely wrong. And then I started uh, put it, putting out content and it was me and RJ alone for a long time. Or like not maybe a long time, but at least taking it serious to not be rude towards anyone else. I know there was a, f a Swedish friend of mine called Niklas that was okay. also pulling out good content that he, he ended up quitting the game uh, mm -hmm. l later on. That, that's always going to happen, obviously. We all come to a point when when that's going to happen. But it's that's interesting. That's where the balance is. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting to see uh, how much it has grown. I watched, uh, because Ian uh, Ballinger, as you know, has has the list of all the streamers. It's his video oh, yeah. description. And it's so amazing to see everyone that is just, it amazes me to see. I've subscribed to each and every one to, you know, um, to uh, to be able to watch and, you know. Me uh, too. I have over a thousand people on YouTube that I'm subscribed to and probably 975 of those are from the Golf Clash community. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's... Uh, I, I subscribe to people that just frequent streams. I recognize their name. Okay, maybe one day they'll stream, you yeah. know, so I sub. And I've met a few people on their brand new first stream that way. Uh, uh, help support them, help them grow, you know. How was uh, how was your first stream, and what uh, what oh. got you into streaming? <laughs> my kids, my kids. Yeah. So little little plug here. My oldest mm. child, his name is Ben. He has a YouTube channel called Ben Odict Gaming, Ooh. and that O is a zero. It's in the description of all of my videos. Um, and my other son has a channel as well, Johnny. But Ben encouraged me. He's like, Daddy you talk more than me and you love games so much and you have a good computer and blah, 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 blah. Why don't you stream? And I was like, me, why would I stream? Like, and then I thought about it and I thought about watching like your stream mm -hmm. and I've watched other streamers of other games in the past and really enjoyed them. I thought about my guild leader and her streaming and it was like, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do it. <laughs> and nice. it just kind of happened. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to turn the camera on and I'm just gonna make it happen, right? Nice. I think you, with the way as you explained that you you can talk, and I know you can talk, which is perfect for. <laughs> yeah, that's positive. I, you know me, I can talk for ages as well about just uh, and nothing really. And uh, th you need to kind of have that um, have that thing where you can do that because otherwise it's gonna yeah. be a lot of quiet time and if i watch a streamer like, that's just quiet then that's um hard for me to watch to be honest yeah and and i i i really think like it's especially important when sometimes if you're brand new and you're streaming you know sometimes the first day or week like look at mike ditto head talking about the first like few months that he streamed to an empty room he was by himself yeah. talking away playing the game doing what he loves and you know if you don't have any sort of monologue how are you going to build a dialogue with someone else, right? You have to have your own thoughts and ideas and be, you know, willing to share them. Yeah, I, I remember the language was the biggest problem for me. I like, I, I was yeah. so afraid of, uh, I, I started on, I don't know if you know that platform called shoe.tv. No. Nope. Uh, it was uh, like uh, this way where I can take my, basically like DU recorder without okay. any camera and you have a chat and stuff. I had like 
5 to 20 people in there watching me stream like way back in the day and I was so afraid to say anything because my uh, my stuff was crap um, so um, but you believed yeah uh, yeah you know I believed and uh, you know you kind of you kind of run with it in the end it was so fun streaming is fun um, it is it's a rush even if I play poorly even if I have the worst stream, which was a uh, a minus seven on nine holes, yeah. it's embarrassing to play bad. But at the same time, like there's such good people boosting you up and giving you words of encouragement, and they're just there supporting you. When I push end stream, and I take off the mm. headset and I walk away, I have like this feeling of like euphoria, a rush of positivity. I love it. Yeah. And thank you, everyone. I, could, I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much, everyone, for making this possible for each and every one of you. And please, uh, for those of you in chat, have in mind that there will not be that many questions that we're going to get to ask to. You know, we um, are following the questions that I'm having here. Don't take it personal, please. Like, if there is something specific, we'll get to that. And uh, there is not something that we, uh, you know, I'm taking a couple of questions here and there to uh, to be able to you know that I, I think it's nice you know but i want to grill matthew with some questions here and i like <laughs> for you to you know get to know uh matt then you can go into his stream hopefully and just um uh, give him give him uh give him a bunch of tough questions we can know? talk we can talk like i i make great pride i mean i don't have 100 900 people like golf clash tommy in the stream particularly <laughs> typically we're 10 20 maybe close to 30 people mm. and i try to respond to each and every person um you know as we go that's good i think that's a good way to when when the numbers is in that area i think it's good to to i have no reason not to and sometimes i'll just take a little minute between holes and we'll mm. have a little chat talk about what we're talking about and okay let's move on hole four you know like that's that's nice that's nice uh let's see okay uh no but that's uh that's good uh matthew uh, uh when it comes to uh the game itself you know there is a lot of opinions there is a lot of uh what can i say thoughts from each and every one i'm one of them that you know that's uh, pouring i'm saying what i'm thinking you are the same could you please like let me know do you have any thoughts of um what could be added to the game or what can i say like what you want to change like is there anything that you're thinking about there you can say yeah, yeah. how many things you want so just go ahead there's just two two main things that come to mind all the time um i think they absolutely need to incorporate a driving range um just a little area that you can practice swinging the club um, I understand that this is a 2v2 multiplayer game from Playdemic's perspective, and I respect that. But in my own estimation, and having played many golf video games over the years, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to just practice swinging the club, or at the very least, adding some kind of new game mode that is non-tournament, non-tour play, that we can deviate into a more single-player environment. Um, the other thing that I absolutely think that they need to do is I think they need to look at the model. Um, many people have probably heard of the game Clash Royale. It's mm. by game developer Supercell, the same company that made Clash of Clans, mm. Boom Beach. You know, not an advertisement, but I love Clash Royale, and I've played it for over three years since it was uh, out in beta. And the way that they manage the maxed cards, the extra cards in that game is within the clans. Um, well, for example, once a week on Sundays, they have Epic Sunday, and you can request from your clanmates um, an Epic card. So, okay, so I want to request my uh, my Apocalypse card, you know? So every Sunday I can request four cards. And so it, it, it doesn't matter if you have a lot or a little. The person that has a little can still get four Apocalypse cards from their high-level opponent, uh, high-level mm -hmm. clanmates. You can request um, throughout the week, every other day of the week, every three to four hours. Um, you can request common and rare cards. So there's three card levels, just like in this game, common, rare, and epic, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. And they manage the problem of, of maxed-out cards masterfully. It's never been an issue in that game because it's something that the developers have worked at uh, at the core. So mm. I'm not saying that they can plagiarize Supercell uh, and take that idea directly, 
But if anyone from Playdemic ever watches this video, I would strongly encourage them, you know, to take a look at that system and see if we couldn't. Um, not only is that going to give us a solution to the extra card problem, I don't have any mechs clubs, but I know you do. Um, it's another way to make clans more appealing and more meaningful because you want to be in a clan full of people that are generous and donating and active so that when you request your, you know, your last few sniper cards, somebody's going to give them to you. And it, it builds a relationship of reciprocity between clan mates, you know, so that's what I would see. Very, I, I, very interesting, uh, to be honest. Like, I really liked that idea. I think many that are watching, like... Please, if you're watching this afterwards or just now, let us know what you think about Matthew's ID, about, you know, the more towards... It, yeah, it's not Matthew's ID uh, per se, but, you know, the, the idea that they do have in Clash of Clans. I don't play Clash of Clans myself, but I, yeah. I, I am under the impression that Playdemic, when they created Goal of Clash, did get some type of influence by Supercell and their game. Absolutely, because isn't Supercell Swedish? I ha no, I think it's I, I, th I think it's Finnish. If I'm not oh, completely okay. wrong, but you know, I think it's the so. the, the Nordic uh, any uh, to to that. And for me, I thought for a little time in the beginning that actually Clash of Clans and Golf Clash was honestly from the same developer. Yeah, that's what I, I did too. When my friend told me Golf Clash, yeah. I immediately thought of Clash Royale and and Clash of Clans. Right, uh, but they're don't... all very clashy. But don't you think it's maybe when we're talking about the cards, you know, I, I now you correct me if I'm wrong because I don't play Clash of Clans, but uh, I know they nerf uh, the, the cards there, like they are changing the abilities to, yep. you know, be, be more fair. But they did, they started to do that already from the beginning. To be they a, always have, yeah. yeah, they call it a balancing update, and it's just like in any other game that has like like world of warcraft they have balancing updates every week yeah you know so they might make one fireball hit for a little more damage and this armor might be lowered a little bit and the developers are always trying to find a state of balance and part of the magic of those adjustments is that you never get stuck in the same thing hmm. you never know that okay this you know this this club is going to be you know the best always no, mm. there can be changes. I don't think this game needs a lot of balancing, though. It is really well made. Yeah, but don't you like just to dig into that? I'm gonna just gonna uh, see it from a Golf Clash. Anthony uh, it says your idea is very interesting, but unfortunately, I think Playdemic is a little more greedy than to do something like that. Um, and um, I would l take away from players having to either spend or put in time. Anthony, I think when when it comes to that part, I think. And hope we're going towards a way where, you know, I, th I, I do think they are looking at it that way. Not to say that I'm knowing that that is the case, but doing that way, looking at it that way would create players to spend more. That's how it is. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it all the time. That would be the same, you know, as... Oh, what can I say? Let, let's pretend this golden shot, for an example. I love that we have special balls, but you know, give us give us an eyeball on the me on the on the on the medium one. Give us a snow globe on the on the hard one. Give me give me a reason to log in because if I want to open the game more often, I'm mm -hmm. way more likely to open my wallet as well. Yeah. So I I hope that we're going towards that, and I think the club cards would be an absolute beautiful idea to kind of involve the clans more because the. You know, the perks that you're getting from the clans are good, but, you know, they have so much room to do that better. So, uh, we'll yeah. see. But it's an interesting uh, in interesting one, to be sure. But about the, the nerfing, I don't know if, if you remember that Playdemic had an ID. Which yes, was, I remember. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and you said that the clubs didn't need any balancing. At least, I, I thought... I, I might heard you wrong, but, like... What is it that you think is... Because the only thing I see, you use the extra mile until you get the Thor's Hammer or the Apocalypse to a decent level. You basically never use any of the other clubs. Quarterback is more familiar, but then looking at the Wood Club, it's the Sniper or the Cataclysm or, you know, the Garden if you are, are James. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so what what is it that... I do strongly believe that this game needs some balancing with the clubs although because I don't like... The fact that there is one club that is so much better than anyone else. 
But you know, what do you think about that? I think that's a really difficult problem. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think what they could actually do would be to add more. Um, and because to me, I, I think that if they make small tweaks, they're just going to upset people. But if they rework everything and maybe introduce a couple of new clubs and really make a wide sweeping change of the full club system, then it's going to affect everyone sort of equally. Mm. Um, but it's such a diplomatically difficult thing for the company to make changes like that, you know, because then there's going to be a lot of backlash on social media. And it's never the people that are happy that get on <laughs> social media to say, oh my, this is so exciting. <laughs> No, it's just when we're upset that we go on there to complain. Hmm. Uh, like I, I don't know. I think it's it's difficult, but I could see them adding a higher level of tournament. Hmm. Uh, I know you've talked about it, and I've heard other people talk about it. You know, like some kind of champions level. Yeah. They could even have like a rookie champions, pro champion, expert champions. You know, they could make it have a need for better clubs in the game. I, I'm not sure. I don't know that I have the answer to that. No, and uh, I I don't think I think that you know uh, speaking of I've been been what can I say sponsored for a while, but also been following the game since uh, the beginning, like February two thousand seventeen, and and uh, so there will be they have confirmed that so many times in support tickets and stuff that they will do some change with the club cards. I just you know I just truly hope it's it's a good one. I think it's gonna be that. And that's worth all the wait, but uh, we will uh, see. But the tournament aspect is very interesting because tournament is a big part of Gold Clash, and there that's is my favorite. Yeah, and unfortunately, there is a lot of complaints about the fact that you know some players feel that they don't have a chance. Um, what do you think? Yeah. What What do you th What do you say towards that? That you know, um, uh, do you feel that it's the same? same thing there i think we all have the same opportunity you know and i think that you can go you know you can play the victim oh you know poor me i only have an extra mile three but you can on the other side of it it's like well you know play more you know mm. open more chests you know you 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 have to kind of work for what you receive and to me i i get that attitude from other games you know if you want your character to be stronger go and kill more dragons because if you get more dragon scales, you can build stronger armor. And I take that attitude into Golf Clash in that it's nobody's fault but mine that I don't have a level 10 sniper, you know. Um, so I'm quite keen to play it out and to get to that end reward, right? And I look at that as a positive part of the game's challenge. I don't look at it as if the developers are somehow you know, depriving me of an opportunity because it's like every other mobile game, you can speed it up with money. That's how it is in 2019. And it's been that way for close to 10 years, you know, pretty much since the app store and the Google play store were released. That's when, you know, the, the whole concept of, you know, you, you, you don't buy a game once anymore. You hmm. continually pay for all games. So there's the money side of it, but there's also the fact in this game, if you play enough, and you continue to grind at it, you can get a max level apocalypse as well. Sure, it might take you three years, but I've played Clash Royale for three years and I just maxed my account a couple weeks ago. I don't like to take the victim on it. I just like to play harder and work harder. And I encourage people that want better results to put in better effort. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting. Thank you for that, uh, that answer. Uh, and, you know, I don't think in however it's going to be, it's going to be seen from everyone as completely no. fair no. um and that you know there is this bracket question about you know players um players playing in the rookie that should supposedly play in a different division you know uh, if you have multiply goals in rookie you should not be playing in rookie in my opinion but then obviously there's other aspects of that you know uh, uh i'm just looking at i think it know, falls on the developer I yeah, think it comes down agreed. to play demic setting limits. I agree. So right now the players are playing the game within the confines that have been provided to them. So whether we like it or not, I mean, if the game developers allow it, they're just playing the game. So I'm not going to hate on anyone for playing the game the way it's been released. I have some feelings, you know, when am I first rookie, when I hit my first gold banner, yes, hmm. I moved up to pro. Now, 
I kind of wish I'd stayed a little longer. I've struggled. It's been difficult for me. That's the take that I made. But I respect everyone's right to play it the way Playdemic lets them play it. Mm. And, you know, that's, uh, that's a, as I know, that's a big debate. Um, but it's kind of how I feel right now. Yeah, uh, definitely. I kind of agree. You know, it's, it's interesting, though, with all the debates on the community. And that leads me towards... Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, another thing that I would like to touch base on, and I think I mentioned that to you when we talked yesterday, and that's the, there has been coming up a new thing now that uh, it seems to unfortunately be uh, be running around, especially Master Division tournaments, but also mm. featured in Expert. Uh, I'm not saying that it's on a huge scale, but it at least seems like it when you read about it, but it's not in a huge scale then it then we would know but that is the the account sharing part people getting played uh, getting their account played for money what do you think about that is that would be is that something you know hey you know if your money is okay or is it like uh, what do you think morally to me mm -hmm. i think it's wrong you know morally i think it's wrong but like on a gaming level from a gamer like i i understand why a person would do anything in their power to try to achieve a goal but like just to me it cheapens it you know if i never win a master's gold but i played the game honorably and by the rules i'm okay with that that's how i operate but to me like i i can't police the community if i see something that looks to be in poor conduct you know i'm gonna um submit a support ticket and i'm gonna hope that the that the the developers do everything in their power to to ban that player or to at least enforce the terms of the terms of service um, because at the end of the day you know this is a private property that we're, we're working on here and uh you know it's it's unfortunate but that's human nature i just mm. in my opinion you know those rewards are dirty and if that's how you play the game i i think it's a little uh a little underhanded yeah it's not uh... my style and I, I agree, it's not right. Um, it's um, what can I say? And to just speak about that, if you see something obviously that might look suspect in any way, then report it to the support. Yeah. I understand that some people might, you know, sometimes you know they don't do it because you know there's a long answer times and stuff sometimes. But you know, if you don't report and you go to the community and complain instead, that's really not going to help. No. Uh, that's Report going... respectfully. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the best way to go. Whatever history you have talking with the support. Um, so uh, when it comes to you know you your game. Like, what division do you play? And uh, what level of playing do you do today in tour play? And, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I have three accounts. Well, four, three that I have played in tournaments. Uh, one pro account that, um, you know, that I, that's my main, I guess you could say. And then I have two other rookie accounts. My, my, my better rookie account, I'm just about ready to bring it up into pro mm -hmm. so that I can kind of play two rounds back to back. Because if I've learned anything about, you know, multiple accounts, it's that practice makes perfect um, often, not always. Sometimes practice still makes great. <laughs> that's a golf <laughs> clash problem. But, uh, you know, that's that's kind of where I'm at. I, I struggle. You know, I struggle. I, I feel like I have the fundamentals down. I feel like I play this game at a, at a really decent level. But I'm still working on my consistency. You know, I'm still working on a full 18 holes of not messing up one bad drive or one stupid sand that to me is my struggle right now uh, and i think there's going to be some people out there that can empathize with that it's uh you know it, it's um to me it's it's just like real golf which i that's a sport that i didn't mention earlier that i have definitely played is that psychological factor of not getting ahead of yourself not stressing about the errors you have made but really staying in the moment and uh, that's that's what i really really work to do hmm. Uh, interesting, interesting. And uh, once again, go over to Everly Gaming, subscribe to the channel, hey, and uh, and check it out. Uh, Golf Clash Addict TV, thank you so much for the two bucks. Hey, Chris. Great, great conversation. We thank you for that. And as you all know, or if you don't know, Golf Clash Addict TV 
uh, also provides excellent content click his name in the chat subscribe to his channel thank you so much chris you create some boom and some love in the chat i love how you know Ooh, it, it feels like when i put the boom it's the same when i when rj has shaved his head it's on your head so it's basically <laughs> like you know <laughs> yeah that's one of the rules about being a guest on your channel isn't it you have to have less hair than tommy is that uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that you know We'll see. It depends on, you know, I I have some other people coming on that might going to have a bit more hair uh, than I have. Ooh, spoilers, <laughs> maybe. Ah, uh, no, nah, no, nah, we're going to take that. You know, I'm going to keep quiet about that uh, a little bit. Uh, I have a hard time to keep quiet about it, but I'm, I'm going to try to. Um, uh, what do you two think about Playdemic developing their own overlay? I'm going to let you answer. Oh. That one, absolutely that's that's money in the bank guys that's a no-brainer you put that one in accessibly to everyone you know a one-time only fee don't you dare make that subscription because i will stop playing this game if you try to make some tool like that subscription model mm -hmm. <laughs> but but if they just put it in for like 199 they're going to sell hundreds of thousands of dollars have a major bump in revenue and every new player is going to want it or to make the most player friendly decision the way to make us the gaming community the people that promote golf clash happy make it a toggle switch do you want the grid on off on off it's like 10 minutes of development time maybe a day whatever i just think they need to accept the fact that we play this game a certain way we play it using calculators and wind ring adjustment methods and they need to be in tune with what the players are doing how we're using their game support us so that we can continue to support the developer forward and onboard new players to the game in a in a very friendly way you know i had a friend at work his name is john thanks for playing the game john but john got tired of playing the game because he didn't want to play it with a second device you know once he realized how i was playing the game at a higher level than him he was a little bit turned off you know so if i could have shown him oh no no that little grid is right here boop, and just pushed a button you know I, I don't know. I think that to me is something they either need to completely avoid or just give it to us. Just get it out there. Should make it, it a thing. Should the player be able to play without overlay them? Or you, <laughs> or, you, or you just mean that, you know, the game has come too far, that it's kind of too late to, to you know, yeah. ignore the fact that overlay is existing. They need to just embrace it and make their own. And, you know, maybe even... I don't know about the calculator situation, but I do think that there should be an aiming grid or some kind of, you know, something beyond the bullseye to allow you, to, or not, it just has to be consistent, right? They have to make it so that it's there for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just know that it would make people happy. Um, it would help. Uh, it would help me psychologically feel like I can get my needle where I want it to be. But at the same time, you know, I don't want to breach their terms of service and I don't even want to breach the gray area. I'd like to be in the social hub one day, you know, I, and I respect the rules. I respect the terms of service. So I, I think it's it, for me, it's a two piece. I, I don't see it when when it comes to the calculator part, getting help with the rings, which is a super big aspect of the game. I definitely think that's something that I would love to see Golf Clash provide if anyone oh. should provide it. Um, and then but with grids, I, I don't. I agree with that. I don't think grid should be a part of the game. And the reason for that is like, uh, yeah, it's, what can I say? It's like a, it's like a crutch. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm not using grids myself. Uh, I've never done that. And I understand and I, I completely understand the positive with it, but it kind of takes away a lot of the, like, especially when you come to a higher level in the game, you know, there should be needed a skill to be able to get the wind arrow pointing straight. You should be able to handle using the amount of curl, not using grid lines to be able to guesstimate the amount of curl. You know, that's uh, that's my thought. You know, and uh, I stand I stand yeah. by that. But uh, it's uh, it's interesting. So I it, need. It's a good perspective. It keeps the skill in the game. Yeah, you know, we can see it from different angles, obviously, and uh, it's. Uh, in the end, I think that the developers of the apps today should have reached out to Playdemic in a very early stage so they could maybe do something together. 
uh, I think the biggest problem with it all without, you know, now I'm just kind of like thinking out loud. I think the biggest problem with it all is the fact that they kind of went ahead and did something that that was, you know, bigger and more something that people bought and then then play them think uh, thought and I, I and it become became a game like because I understand the problem with it now as now if you talk to someone and they ask in the community what should I do to learn the windring system so I can start be able to play competitively yeah get yourself an app that kind of like yeah. and and that's that's the wrong part with it and I understand that from from the game's perspective that they don't want people to depend on having a, a tool to be able to compete uh, competitively but you know it's uh, it's um, it's interesting and i love to hear your uh, thoughts about that in chat but also in the comments afterward what do you think about the overlay part in this game it's an interesting topic keep it clean you know everyone is entitled to their opinion uh, Jamie Blanco, great interview. Tommy Matthew, much love. Jamie, thank you so much Jamie, for the ninety nine. And uh, Jamie also has an awesome channel. Shout out to him. Click his name. Subscribe to it. Thank you so much. Uh, it's RJ TV. You know, <laughs> boom, my friend. Thank you so much. Great interview. He thanks as well. Uh, thank you, thank you. Give RJ TV some boom and some love in chat. Also subscribe to his channel. And then last but not least, Jason Harvey. Thank you for whole 70 Pro got first banner. Boom, my friend. That's awesome. Uh, congratulations. Give Jason some boom and some love in the chat. Thank you so much, all three of you. And Matthew, my friend, we are uh, running here to the end. And I'm going to have some uh, uh, quickies for you. And this is going to be uh -oh. super fun. <laughs> uh -oh. So I hope okay. you all are ready. And, you know, uh, we're going to... Uh, I'm going to ask you as... If you remember uh, when I had uh, our first guest here, Ian, and uh, mm -hmm. you get two options, you're gonna choose one of them, and you know I'm, um, I would love to, if you can, kind of give a short explanation on why, and also you know you, I don't want you to, hmm, uh, maybe, yeah, as you say, you know, quick answers and maybe a quick explanation on why, if that is Rapid something. Rapid fire. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with, I, I say an easy one, you know. Okay, uh, hockey or football. Hockey, <laughs> yeah, kind of uh, because it. it's because it's more exciting. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, I. I kind of that was uh that, <laughs> that was kind of just to get started. It started. Okay. So an albatross or an hole in one. Albatross. Albatross. Because I think it's more difficult. Ooh. Do Mostly. You, I need to follow up with that. Why? Why do you think that? Because I've had more success hitting <laughs> hole in ones than I have albatross. <laughs> so basically. I got, take <laughs> Sorry, you take yourself like a middle ground in that, you know, if... Uh, okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Uh, Alba, though. I go Alba all the way. Hmm? Alba, baby! Uh, and then we take another, you know, Golf Dash question. Navigator or Quasar? Quasar. Quasar. I gotta get around that corner. Okay, is it the uh, side spin that kind of, like, uh, tickles your... I was about I to say something rude. Uh, not rude. More, but... more versatile use of my balls. Hmm? I, yeah. You know, I love how there is so many people in my family, when I talk about the balls in Golf Clash, <laughs> they kind of go towards the more sexual area to not, ah. you know, go too far about that. We're all the human. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, you are the best of me. Chat and talk dead. Thank you so much for the 550 euros. Thank you so much, my friend. Give chat and talk death some boom and some love in chat. Oh my god, I love your name, though. That was awesome. Um, okay, Coca-Cola or Red Bull? Coca-Cola. But diet Coca-Cola. I don't like the sugar. Uh-huh. Okay, so you're you're one of those. Okay, Coca-Cola. I, yeah, I need to start drinking that stuff. I really do. Uh, and uh, I'm going to start Helps with... Helps me keep my girly figure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know who Terry Lyle is, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, do you want to receive... In the mail, a nude of me, completely, my full body, or Terry Lyle? Oh boy. Uh, let's just preface my response with the fact that I'm a nurse. I've seen you all naked. Every one of you. Um, oh boy. Time to pay. You know, 
there's more money in the Tommy picture, so I'm gonna take it so I can eBay your ass, literally. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. We got no, one. We got don't one. do it. <laughs> yeah. oh, we got one. I can't believe one. that came out of my mouth. Oh, oh I feel dirty. I, I can sleep tonight. Good. <laughs> I can sleep tonight. Good. Okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have you to explain that one. You know, we we all we all know that's clear as day. You know, all so. money. <laughs> I'm just. I'm gonna sell it. Okay, up to the highest bidder. <laughs> Holy cow, if anyone would buy that, I would call weird directly, to be honest. But um, yeah, my friends, uh, thank you so much, each and every one, for being here. Thank you so much for uh, to Matthew for taking the time of his day for being here as well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, my friend. Uh, and uh, once again, go over, subscribe to the channel, uh, show Matthew some love. Uh, check out the next and uh, upcoming stream there. Obviously, support uh, the channel here. Subscribe. We're growing like crazy, which is uh, much thankful for me. The next step is to stream on Friday when I'm going. To, where I'm going to? The plan is to stream 24 hours for a charity. Ooh, that's Friday. Yeah, right? that's Friday. I'm a little. What charity? Is uh, it one charity for the full 24 hours? Yeah, or? it is. I'm gonna take one charity. It's gonna be something with children. Just. Uh, so children cancer or something like that. Uh, we'll see what I'm gonna choose, and I'm obviously gonna all the donation minus what YouTube takes. I'm gonna donate to to, to yeah. I need to say like that obviously. If they if, donate directly to Tommy's PayPal, then well, which one takes a bigger cut? <laughs> yeah, you know it's still gonna be a cut, so it's yeah. uh, it's better to handle that you know through um, through YouTube. But it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna start with a new account and try to get it as far as possible. I'm gonna have a, like a donation table as well from my for my end. So if I reach you know, tour five, when the end of the stream, I'm gonna donate this amount. And if I go to tour seven, it's gonna be this amount, the tour eight, this amount. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be nice. And then um, see if I fall oh, asleep I in my chair. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. Don't fall out of it. Just put your seatbelt on, okay? <laughs> seat <belt>. Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that was, um, that was funny. That's made us a gift now, I saw. Epic, <laughs> epic fail. <laughs> epic fail, for sure. Uh, yeah, uh, once again, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, and uh, for the time on Friday, it's going to be 9 a.m. Like, the, the same time me and Matthew started today, uh, it's going to be 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. going to start and I'm going to end on Saturday at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I'm probably going to fall asleep uh, right away. <laughs> And once again, much love, everybody. Thank you so much, and have a beautiful day. And thank you so much, thank Matthew, you, for being here. Thanks, everyone.